Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick, and it's time for today's Camp Notes from 72724, Saturday. uh, If you went to camp and missed some of the Oriole game, you're probably lucky by now. They're down in that game. But uh, anyway, uh, good day at camp again. Lots of interesting things going on. The most interesting by far was the return of Lamar Jackson, which we're going to talk about extensively in terms of uh, his play. He spent the whole practice, didn't miss any time, and and uh, uh, looked good after some initial rough stages, uh, I would say. Second Street practice in pads for the Ravens. Uh, they had just one field of 11-on-11 play, so uh, everything was focused on on that field three and what was going on there, and it was a, a, a Certainly a, a good day, an intriguing day with lots of things going on. Uh, Lamar Jackson, again, as I mentioned back, uh, threw an early interception to Humphrey and then came back and had a good day, particularly in some of the red zone drills, which we'll, which we'll talk about. Um, absent from practice were Keaton Mitchell, TJ Tampa, Disa Isaac, Ivandi Rigby, now five straight days. Uh, by the way, John Harbaugh talked about Rigby a little bit, just briefly, that that all those guys have soft tissue injuries that are that are uh, common at this time of year, and they're going to be extra careful with them and probably bring them back later. And it's a shame for a player like Rigby because if he misses out on the preseason, he probably misses out on a practice squad spot. Um, but uh, it seems to be trending in that direction that it's, he's, he's going to have a tough time getting on the field for these preseason games. Uh, Kyle Van Noy missed his second straight practice with a neck thing, as Harbaugh said yesterday. Um, the, uh, the injury that occurred today, Trayvon Mullen went down on his shoulder, had to leave practice. Uh, John Harbaugh did not have further details when he took the podium, so hopefully we hear soon, and and uh, or even better yet, that we see him back on the field. To date, we have not had close practices to report, including the Offense and defense being really competitive with each other and 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 looking like they're they're uh, you know qualitatively similar, um, but this was this was a very close practice. Uh, uh, the offense had its moments, the defense had its moments. Um, defense in particular had a lot of trouble stopping red zone touchdowns, um, but they also gave up a big long drive that uh, that we'll want to talk about in a little bit more detail as well. Practice was dedicated to Jacoby Jones. Um, was mentioned at the podium. Uh, And it was also Youth Football Day. You don't really know when Youth Football Day is going to happen, but Youth Football Day is an enormous number of kids who all want to sit on the hill. Uh, They're usually pretty good about about controlling that, but the the kids are uh, um, having a lot of fun, and they really, really appreciated the return of Lamar. Um, Lamar came onto the field. He did his work down in one corner of, of, of field three, and then he re- ran off to basically the opposite corner of field three and onto field one. And uh, I think it's field. Yeah, I think that's field one. Uh, and he, uh, uh, the, the, the kids all wanted to follow him, but the kids have to stay in position. And the kids that, you know, have, have people who are there watching them and try to, you know, herd this, these groups uh, together. And, you know, that, that, Presented a challenge, let's just say at that point, because they were very excited to see Lamar. First thing I noticed when I came on uh, to the field was that they were having full punt drills. So you don't see this like the first couple of days of camp, even if they work on punts a little bit. They don't usually actually punt the ball, actually have a return man back, actually be working on releases, et cetera, et cetera. They did all that in in, in this game, and uh, I thought that was kind of neat to see. Um, I always look at a few of the return men to see who's doing two things well. The first is who's setting up under the football and tracking it well, such that they can put themselves in a position to explode out of their stance. And the other is how well do they explode out of that stance? How explosive do they look? I I can't judge certainly in this, how well they're reading blocks just because you don't, you don't really get that. I don't think um, until you get real games and, and live fire on the other side. But um we had uh, Owen Wright did fumble a return. That was unfortunate. Wallace probably looked the best in terms of getting under the ball, and he had decent explosiveness coming out of it. Um, so that was that was certainly positive. Deontay Hardy had, I would say, average explosiveness in the one rep I saw. But he did, you know, he 
caught the ball was underneath it. So, um, you know, a decent set of outcomes as, as far as it's happening. Um, they had one or two other guys who, who actually took returns. Um, I'm not going to mention all of them. I'm really not really supposed to mention all of them anyway, but, uh, but you know, I, I always measure them on those two characteristics. How do they get under it? How do they explode out? Nobody really stood out as being at a, at a Michael Campanero level in this regard, but I'd say probably of all of them, Wallace uh, looked the best. Uh, the wide receivers and tight ends, just to go through another drill they sometimes do at camp, were working on press coverage muscle memory, I'll call it. They use this uh, dummy with two arms on it, and they're trying to um, have receivers and tight ends make some sort of move to get off press coverage, and how do they deal with their hand play. And one of the press coverage, if you're aggressive about it, if you're the defender and you're aggressive about it, it can be... A, a, it usually creates a high risk, high reward situation where you literally can get thrown out of the play, uh, have your momentum going in completely the wrong direction from that receiver if he knows how to handle press coverage well. And that's why, you know, big physical press corners who actually do it well, have good technique for it, are so highly valued in the league and 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 frankly are very are quite rare. Um, so anyway, uh, it was nice to, nice to see some of that work going on and, uh, I don't have any particular comments, but it's a bit, just an interesting drill that I want to comment on. One of the things people have been asking me about is when is the linebacker and running back, um, pass blocking drill going to, going to occur? Well, I noticed it was happening basically same place it happened last year, middle of the field. And it wasn't exactly that it was more of a coverage slash pass rush drill. So, the running bat sets up in a position he can block or he may also go out into a pattern as I was observing things occurring. And the inside linebacker needs to be careful, try and recognize that and not lose his one-on-one -on -one coverage responsibility on the running back. Now, the one I saw last year was very one-sided in terms of the, the, the running backs had to block, had, had to execute pass blocks versus these linebackers. And that's a very difficult drill for, for the running back. A very um, Obviously, the, the linebackers tend to be slightly bigger and advantaged in, in that particular um, element. So we didn't see that this year. This year, it was the, the onus was more on the linebackers to be careful about where they were focusing their attention. So anyway, um, I did notice that, that uh, Owen Wright had a pretty nice block uh, that he set up on Roquan Smith. Uh, Roquan may have just been playing a little careful, but he stayed kind of pressed against Wright and um, basically did not make progress towards the quarterback on the play, which I thought was probably a win for Wright. And then we saw Wright beat Deion Jennings on a wheel route. Now that's really good. When you do that in this drill, that's certainly something they're looking for. And if you look at all receiving routes for a running back, it's probably the most important that they can get a, in, in terms of the ability to get a big play out of. You just lots of screen passes to running backs. Obviously, if you're Ray Rice, you, you might have more yardage than, sorry, yak than you have yardage in a year because your average reception is behind the line of scrimmage. So I'm not saying it's not important for a lot of backs, but the wheel route is a, you know, can be a devastating weapon when you get coverage from just a linebacker and could beat him uh, down that sideline. Malik Ham had a nice good coverage of Collier uh, crossing the field. Uh, that was another one. I, I, you know, we're watching Malik Ham closely. He's a guy who I think is, is right on the fringe of making this roster. He's one of the really exciting prospects for these preseason games when they arrive. I'm sure he will get a lot of playing time, some in the first half probably, probably plays pretty close to the entire second half, I would guess, at outside linebacker. And he's a player I think uh, you know is really fighting for a roster spot at this point, has a real chance. Okay, so let's move on to the, 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 the main event here, which is Lamar Jackson's return. And there is a lot to go over. I took notes. I tried to take notes on every time he was on the field for an individual um, drill seven on seven or 11 on 11. And there were a lot of them. So we're going to go through this just a moment after I get a drink of water here. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, it did not start off well. He, he was just doing some receiver drills. He overthrew Kirkland 35 yards down the right sideline, obviously, most important thing to do in those kind of drills is just get the ball on target to your receiver. And he overthrew him by a few yards. So um, that was kind of a bummer. 
Um, then he had a seven on seven interception by Humphrey. And that was probably the low point uh, of the day for him. And uh, the ball overthrown slightly. Humphrey made the pick. And uh, uh, Humphrey, by the way, is having a great camp. That was Jonas Schaefer and I were talking. I, he, he said that's his fourth pick of camp. He may, he may very well be right about that. But Humphrey's had a bunch of other PDs as well um, in the, what is it now, six days of camp so far. And, you know, there's still a couple of people out there looking for their first interception, most notably Brandon Stevens. And, uh, uh, you know, he had a, a little struggle over a football trying to get interception today. But but Humphrey um, is is playing great football. And the first – getting back to Lamar, though, in the first 11-on-11 11 11, um, was a red zone. His squad went three and out, um, had a catch by 89 by Mark Andrews in the back of the end zone was ruled out of bounds. And then on third down, he was sacked by Adafi Owe. So, uh, you know, not a good series to start off. Next 11 on 11, he ran five plays and included a run by Henry, an incomplete deep white right to Walker, again covered by Humphrey, by the way, um, and a nice step-by-step coverage there. And a pass defense by Ajabo at the line of scrimmage that that ended that drive. So, you know, not a good start for Lamar so far. The next 11 on 11, he overthrew Bateman, now, this is a weird play. I don't think this is on Bateman per se. Bateman appeared maybe to be have been held by Brandon Stevens on the play, and he stopped, and the overthrow was you know, good 10 to 15 yards over Bateman's head um, or beyond the spot where Bateman was anyway. Uh, but it was a case. It's not a completion, obviously, and it's not what Lamar would want. He then completed a nice 20-yard cross to Wallace, and this was Humphrey's really bad play of the day, but Wallace beat him on a crossing route. Humphrey left in the in the dust there. Um, but then the drive ended when Lamar was forced to scramble and Travis Jones kind of contained him. They are very liberal with a lot of the whistles. They don't want to make this about whistling sacks, you know, crediting the defense. If they can let the offense play the play out, they, they generally try and let that happen. Um, but this is a, just a ridiculously a long time with Lamar scrambling around the pocket. Um, you know, other players frankly running half speed after him they can't hit him he had a little bit of good containment on that play from travis jones and uh that scramble anyway ended the drive and was eventually whistled dead uh the next drill lamar's back on in seven on sevens the first pass was to bateman just a short little pass to the left side taken down for a, a tackle for loss then he had a five-yard pass to andrews threaded between Harrison and Hamilton. N- nice pass, you know, obviously, but still a bunch of short passes here we're seeing from Lamar in terms of the completions. Um, he had a little swing to likely look like for no gain. Um, Williams was really sitting on the route, which is something in seven on seven that you're really not supposed to do. But anyway, he, he, that's where he was. And then he overthrew Aguilar 25 yards down the uh, right sideline. And Humphrey again in coverage there, uh, continuing on what was a, what was a fine day. Uh, next seven on seven drill, Lamar is back. Humphrey had a late PD against him on a ball intended for Kirkland. It was about 35 yards right down the right sideline. And then he had three other five yard passes. Don't know what they're trying to do at this point, but it almost seems like they're trying to get it back in rhythm, make some quick throws, make some maybe, maybe timing throws, um, just, just to get back in, in shape from where he was. Cause he's obviously it was having some difficulty at that point. Um, Okay. Now, here's where something really interesting occurred. After that 7-on-7 drill and before the next 11-on-11, Lamar spent an extended period of time, and I'm going to estimate it might have been 90 seconds, in the defensive huddle talking to the starters as they're setting up for the next 11-on-11. I don't even really know why somebody wasn't blowing a whistle and saying, you know, get this play started or get back here, Lamar, and run the offense or any of that. But he was in there for a long time. So I can only anticipate it probably wasn't just um jawing it was probably trying to pick up something useful like what are the tells how do you guys always know where to be you know what what am i giving away uh, kind of thing but there's a discussion for a long time there are several different defenders who talked to him including roquan and marcus williams neither of those guys is really trash talkers i don't i, I don't associate with them them with that on the field uh, they can be post-play emoters. They're both leaders. Uh, Hamilton was also in there. Another guy who, you know, I, he's certainly capable of being a sarcastic guy and, and a funny guy. But I don't think in this situation he was, you know, basically talking trash to Lamar. I think they were just having a discussion about what was going on. And 
I, I do not know the exact, you know, obviously I wasn't privy to exactly what was going on, but it's just, it was weird. We, 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 people on the sidelines were commenting about it and, and uh, then got into the following drive and it was a, a two minute drill that they went to. So Lamar had to take the, take the offense 60 yards in a minute and 20 down five and with one timeout. And so there was no, um, uh, there's no field goal here. It's all about uh, scoring a touchdown. So it's the end of the game. It's not the end of the half. Um, he, on that drive, he threw a 35 yard pass to Andrews. who was the, was really the highlight of it. Who had beat Mallette deep. Um, and then he threw a TD pass at the end of that that was thrown to Aguilar, who also beat Mollette. It's just a five-yard throw uh, right towards the right side of the end zone. It was between the the, the numbers in the left uh, – sorry, the numbers in the right hash. Um, and Aguilar got to the ball. So uh, really nice to see that drive. I just can't even tell you what a relief it was, frankly, after a lot of the Lamar struggles, after the sickness, to see that drive and, and him real turn it around. And the fact that he did it after having that conversation – is going to make that conversation more of a focus of, you know, what the hell went on in there? We didn't have anybody at the podium who could tell us exactly that. Now, maybe maybe Harbaugh knew, but Michael Pierce was not on the field for that for that drive. So we didn't have a, a you know, he, he would have been a guy that it would have been nice to, you know, to hear from him what had been said, even if he wasn't part of the conversation. Um, and none of the other defenders, Isaiah Likely and, and Godsey, the, the uh, tight ends coach, were the other guys who were at the podium. So um, none of the other people were uh, were able to comment on that. So interesting, uh, interesting conversation and a great turnaround for Lamar. Then they went to another 11-on-11 drill, which was a goal line drill. Now they start. Every year, data breaches are on the rise. In 2022, the number of victims shot up nearly 41.5% from the previous year. And your personal information is at risk. With hundreds of commercial databases ready to be hacked and that number of victims, it keeps going up each year. Plus, the U.S. has another big data privacy problem, the people search sites. You guys have all seen these. These are websites that create detailed personal profiles on millions of Americans and then publish them online for anyone to see. Your address, your phone number, even family details are just a click away. But there's a way to protect yourself. Meet Incogni. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests the removal of your personal data, and handles any objections they may have. This means less stress for you and more peace of mind. With Incogni, you can safeguard your information from cyber criminals who steal social security numbers and other sensitive personal data to commit identity theft. Imagine the relief of knowing that your personal data is no longer easy prey for hackers. Incogni also protects you from data brokers selling your information to companies to target vulnerable and disadvantaged groups, exposing you to even more discrimination. These lists with titles like Tough Start, Young Single Parents, Rural and barely making it can harm you both online and offline. Don't let personal data, don't let your personal data fall into the wrong hands. Take control with Incogni today. Visit incogni.com slash film study and safeguard your privacy now. It's time to reclaim your digital security. That's incogni slash film study. I-N-C-O-G-N-I dot com slash film study. Incogni, your shield in a digital world. With the ball at the five yard line or the four yard line, right, right around there. And they try and punch it in within three plays. And if the defense can stop them, it's a really good thing, but it, it is often going to result on a touchdown. Um, Lamar was out there the very first time. Uh, he had got multiple, multiple opportunities. I'm going to go through all of these. As I counted it, he had seven separate drive opportunities in this single goal line situation. So I think he probably just asked for more reps and the other quarterbacks, you know, Emory Jones and players like that are just not getting an opportunity at that point. But very first play, <laughs> Andrews and Aguilar uh, jumped off sides and uh, there was a completion to Hill on fourth down uh, where he was pushed out by Williams that, that stopped that drive. So he didn't get it done. Next one. A uh, five-yard touchdown pass to Likely in the left corner. Uh, that certainly is good. Then he had a very late touchdown to Bateman um, in the middle of the field. Again, good, but you don't want to see a lot of really late passes because it probably means that the pressure might have gotten there if 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 it had been a normally played play. Then he had a scramble blown dead for a sack 
Um, Matabike and Ajabo were both kind of chasing him down. It looked like Matabike had the containment. Ajabo might have had the initial pressure. So um, it could have been either of them you credit the sack with. Then a touchdown to Bateman on a 10-yard fade in the left corner. A couple things about that. First of all, um, that is Bateman's normal side of the field, and you, you, would, you would see him on that fade. Um, sorry, a, a, a catch a ball there, not unusually. What is really unusual is the Ravens throwing a fade pass at all because that's not Lamar's thing. He's in the red zone. He's looking for a direct line of sight to snipe a uh, a target in the end zone uh, with a with a laser rather or, or occasionally with a high zipper ball you know a ball between the 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 hash marks that's up high where where uh you know an andrews or a likely might go up and get the football but in this this case it wasn't either of those it was it was just a what i would call a pretty normal timing fade route it dropped in there bateman caught the ball and it got weirder because on the very next play bateman's on the other side of the field Exact same play, opposite side, fade route dropped right in there again, back corner of the end zone. Uh, you know, just the number of fades I've actually seen Lamar throw in his whole career is I could probably count on one hand. Um, it just does not happen very often. Uh, and to have Bateman catch two in a row on consecutive plays was, was kind of cool, and, and having me on opposite sides was was nice as well. And then he had a touchdown. Uh, he threw to, oh, uh, it was 85. I always figured if Scotty Washington or Isaiah Washington, because I get it confused. This is Scotty Washington uh, for a touchdown uh, that was between the, the the numbers and the left and the left hash in this case. So um, very good set of results, had a lot of opportunities in total uh, to, to, to play on that one particular drive. But his play and his touchdowns at the end of the um, – uh, practice brought up the, the total practice score to be very close. It was, it was like 34-33 or 34-32 kind of thing um, at the end. And I think the offense might have won, but it was very close anyway. Um, that's the day for Lamar. And honestly, it, it, I go to camp. I don't even know if he's going he's gonna to be playing that day. He shows up. I was actually excited, you know, to, to see him. Look who's here, you know, kind of thing with Lamar. And then for him to play – you know, as well as he did and on the trajectory of improvement throughout the day, I thought was a very positive thing. I think the Ravens are, are breathing a big sigh of relief over the return of Lamar and, and the quality of his play. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball. It was a solid day for the defense, um, and that meant it was probably its worst day of the entire camp because the defense has dominated like we have not seen in years, um, really since the Suggs era where that defense was so amped up to play and Suggs had them playing at such a high rate. Uh, they'd fall on every football. They were, they were excited to go out there and practice. I mean, Flacco would sometimes be really begging the defense to just let them run their offense, you know, for a while. And, you know, Suggs is basically doesn't want anybody running at less than, less than a hundred. Uh, it, it, it just, this was a, this was, Perhaps a little bit of let up. Perhaps there was some sort of discussion that occurred between Harbaugh and the DC or or Harbaugh and the players on the defensive side to tell them, hey, we need to just allow some offense to be run here. We're not looking for sacks. We're looking to run offensive plays and really see what's going on. We know you guys can can get to the quarterback. So Anyway, they they probably had fewer highlights than before, certainly in terms of the interceptions, but I'll, I'll run through those. Broderick Washington had a very hard knockdown of Derrick Henry on a run player. Met him in the hole, hit him. Wasn't that an attempt to tackle him, but he, he just careened off him, uh, Derrick Henry did, and, and, to, and to the ground. You don't like to see that with your running back. You really don't want that kind of contact, but it was a, it was a nice play by uh, Broderick. Three plays later... He penetrated past Salah to take Ali down for what I, I believe would have been a tackle for loss. So a couple of really nice plays from Braddock Washington, who had kind of a disappointing year last year. It'd be nice to see him uh, come back and play. I think he's had a very good camp so far, by the way. Uh, he's a guy who, on the inside, has looked like um, he's been delivering more damage than he's been taking. Um, obviously, the offensive line, until today, had really had a lot of problems, and, and uh, this is a case where uh, or he looked pretty good. Guy I haven't had an opportunity to talk about much is Josh Ross, and he had consecutive nice plays uh, early, a nice backside contain for a loss on a run play. Uh, and then just three plays later, he stayed in his gap and tackled – I'm sorry, one play later. He stayed in his gap and ta- tackled Ali for a short gain. 
So you want to see good discipline, run defense, both those plays illustrating it. And, uh, you know, Ross is a guy who's also on the fringe of making this team, probably is a top of the practice squad guy, but definitely a guy that could be elevated for special teams, could be elevated to play linebacker, could be definitely a guy they look to uh, if anything were happening to either of the starting inside linebackers. So uh, Ross, a key player and, and one of the guys I'll be looking to when I provide uh, notes of the preseason play. Adafi Owe had another sack to end one of Lamar's series. I think I mentioned that earlier. Earlier, um, just he is an unbelievable force right now in terms of what he's doing on that football field. They're they're having to try and slow him down a little bit, but he's playing very well. Nate Wiggins, a little bit of a mixed day, surrendered a touchdown to Aguilar from Johnson, but he also had an interception in the red zone covering Isaiah Washington. So, um, you know, it's always nice to get a pick. Wiggins has had a couple now this camp, um, looking good, and uh, and hopefully the the Ravens can uh, get him in the lineup early and regularly uh, to see what they have for 2025 because, you know, of course they've got that decision to make on well two decisions to make on brandon williams and marlon humphrey in terms of where they're going humphrey is a defensive star for sure interception versus lamar as kind of an overthrow then a step-by-step coverage of tez walker 40 yards down the right sideline that's not something you can easily do and humphrey is not a young man anymore um, for him to, to stay with tez like that is is very impressive then tight coverage of aguilar that forced an overthrow about 25 yards down the right sideline um did show up that he really likes to play on the sideline. Uh, you know, definitely his physicality plays plays very well there. He had a late PD in coverage of Kirkland, and he had another PD in coverage of Dayton Wade. Uh, I think that was on the sideline as well. Uh, he was beaten once that I noticed. I, I, I mentioned it earlier on the Wallace crossing route for about 20 yards. Now, I, I am making an assumption on that route that that was not some sort of zone coverage where he was passing off. Uh, it looked like he would have been the guy to continue coverage of Wallace on that play. Wallace was wide open, very nice throw and and uh, and catch by him to to look up field and look for more yardage. David Jabo had a pass defense at the line of scrimmage. It honestly looks like David Jabo is playing pretty decent run defense to me too, turning the play inside more effectively, certainly than we'd seen last year in the preseason when he did not look good in that particular area. Um, but, but also just a guy who who might be able to give you something on all three downs and not just in passing situations. So that's kind of exciting and, uh, and, and good to see. We'll definitely be looking forward to that as the, as the preseason games and the live fire starts. Eddie Jackson forced an incompletion in coverage of Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan had been one of the good, good uh, receivers in this camp. So you've got a couple choices. You've got multiple choices with Wade, um, with Sean Ryan in terms of the darling uh, wide receiver. If you uh, if you want to really lean on those second half results from the preseason games and and pretend like they matter. But anyway, I think Ryan is is probably if he's on the practice squad all of last year. Uh, thought of pretty highly as I understand it. And I think he would be a guy that that is probably in the Ravens contingency plans if he doesn't, in fact, make the roster. So definitely a top of the practice squad guy, as I would say. it. Um, let's see what I want to say. Brandon Stevens, um, he had a weird play. He and Tez Walker were on the left sideline and – both appeared to catch the ball almost simultaneously and would neither would give the ball up. The officials did not step in and Stevens and Walker were, were on the ground for about 20 seconds struggling over the football. The first person to eventually come over was Tylen Wallace, who gave a very demonstrative catch signal indicating that they still had possession. The rest of the offense was kind of waiting for these two to figure it out, just pointing up field. It's our ball, blah, 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 get a kind of thing. But, but uh, Wallace eventually came over uh, and did that. Is it really kind of, kind of a bummer that the officials didn't, uh, didn't step in on that. Uh, But the incident kind of serves as a reminder that it's a enormous defensive party. This camp has been And Brandon Stevens is kind of sitting on the outside of it because he hasn't had interception yet. And it, uh, you know, he, he clearly wants one, um, and I will say that that he had a nice tackle for loss on Bateman. Otherwise, he had another ball where he ran into uh, – he and, and um, uh, Bateman became tangled up uh, down the field, and he may have held on to Bateman, or, but for whatever reason, Bateman gave up on the route. And uh, uh, 
Stevens, you know, definitely having an up and down camp so far. Probably had benefited from some of the good defensive play earlier, but this is this is a case where uh, um, he uh, you know, clearly is feeling the need for an interception. Let's put it that way. Ardarius Washington made a nice play for a pass defense coming over to assist on Malik Cunningham. Uh, unfortunately, also allowed a 35-yard reception to Scotty Washington down the left sideline. So uh, mixed results for Ardarius. Uh, I think we'll we'll probably see him take a variety of roles. If I had to guess during the preseason, I think we'll see him summit safety. I think we'll see him summit slot corner. Uh, actually have not seen him too much at slot corner in camp to date, a little bit, but not too much. Um, but I think, I think we'll see some of, some of each from the, uh, from in the first preseason game or in the, in the preseason games as a, as a group. All right, let's move over to the offensive side of the ball where there's a few interesting things going off. We always start off with the laps for the false start penalties. And we had a three bagger on one play with Emory Jones, Nick Samak, and Riley Sharp, the tight end, all going off for a or all taking a lap on the same play. Looked like they all took the full lap, which is something that I can't say for the next guy. Ben Cleveland again took a shortcut after a false start of his. And this is it's a small thing, guys. I realize that, but it's also something just looks terrible. So, so the offense is playing from my right to my left as I watch field three. So if you're the stand, watches the field, the, the it's it's a right to left movement of the offense. Uh, I know Chuck Thompson always used to say the offense is moving from right to left across your radio dial, or something he would say on the, on the air on football games. I always thought that was funny. But anyway, the, the offense is moving from 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 my right to my left, and Cleveland's lap goes around the end zone that is the open end of the field for the offense, where they would score if if they had a play. And what does he do for the second straight day or the second time in a row? He's had a penalty event. He shortcut it and ran across the goal line instead of around the entire field of play, which you probably learn to do when you're running laps in seventh grade football. You learn not to shortcut the 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 end zone in that way. So. Kind of looked like crap, but anyway, I thought Cleveland, by the way, has been quite effective as a run and pass blocker. So he doesn't need these other little things to get Harbaugh pissed at him, and you know, get, get him not uh, getting time on the field. Uh, uh, you know, he's he's probably the Ravens' best chance still to start at right guard this year, though he hasn't really been um, getting all the first team reps by by any stretch of the imagination. But we'll see how that breaks down. We did see, of course, Simpson replace Sala after Sala got a lot of first team reps. Uh, during last year's OTAs and preseason, so um, this is a this is a case where I think we'll um, uh, the switch will be made uh, at some point. It would would be my guess. And Ben Cleveland um, has looked pretty good as a blocker, even though he does not look particularly good as a lap runner. Um, the quarterbacks, none of them were as effective as Lamar. Um, and Lamar had most of his effectiveness late. Johnson did throw two TDs in one red zone deal, red zone drill. So the Ravens had some success offensively converting on those opportunities. Um, Nelson Aguilar beat Wiggins for a five yard touchdown. Uh, again, right side, right, right edge of the end zone there, but, uh, but beating Wiggins, uh, is at least beating meaningful coverage there. Uh, Scotty Washington eventually got free for a touchdown on a very long, uh, pocket time play. Uh, so that was, it's good. It's you'd, you'd like to beat it early, but Hey, if, if you want to be, a, if you're going to be a receiver with the Baltimore Ravens, you want to be an extended play receiver. So go ahead and, and, uh, and, and continue working on every play. Talked about the pass protection uh, being much improved. Harbaugh did praise the line for picking up more of the stunts and games that they were running. So I thought that was fairly telling. I just did notice that while there were a couple sacks still, um, the general preponderance was towards longer pocket time um, and and you know just more time for the quarterback to throw the football, which uh, you know helps to develop that passing game a little bit. I think that most of the other good receiving plays I probably mentioned under Lamar's throw, so I'm not going to go into all of those. But that's going to be it for the for the camp notes today. Uh, another real nice day at camp. Um, uh, the kids were really enjoying it, and uh, they made the autographs on the opposite side of the field, so they didn't try and move the kids from the position where they had them sitting, where they might have gotten all kinds of lost and not 
gotten back on the correct buses, you know, potentially, um, they, they, they brought the autographs to the kids, which, by the way, I thought was a great practice that, that they ought to continue anyway, because sometimes you're in that corner and you, you just can't hear it all with all the amount of screaming that's going on from the fans, you know, begging for autographs there. So uh, great day at camp anyway, not too hot and, uh, and a lot of fun. And again, I'm sorry, it looks like it's much better than the Orioles game at this point, but uh, hopefully that'll get better in the last few innings. We'll talk to you next time on Camp Notes.